Well, there are now some indications that the National Treasury wants to cut back funding to the presidential employment scheme. It currently gives young people job opportunities as part of the campaign to get young people into jobs. As you know, the Treasury has written two departments saying it needs to make dramatic cuts to government spending. There are other reports of the impact this would have on all sorts of other services. Crystal Duncan-Williams is the project lead at the organisation Youth Capital. They help young people. Crystal, good afternoon to you. The presidential employment scheme, what would happen if it were cut? What impact would that have? Good afternoon, Stephen. So the presidential uh, employment stimulus was really um, initially set out as a response to COVID. Um, and there were various programs, 14 in total, um, that were initially laid out. But two programs in particular, the Basic Education Employment Initiative and the Social Employment Fund, have been really successful um, at stimulating local economies so through the Basic Education Employment Initiative. General assistance were placed in schools in practically every public school across the country. So imagine, you know, these young people um, getting 7,000 rand a month at their local school, um, the injection into local economies through young people getting that money in their pocket, the impact of an extra person in a classroom where you often have 40, 50 learners in a class with one teacher, um, you know, the impact has been huge. And the Social Employment Fund, um, Participants were given money to work two days a week, um, doing things in their community that are needed, food gardens, um, early childhood development, you know, really providing services in the community, while at the same time giving these people a little bit of extra income that maybe helps, you know, bolster their, their side hustle, which they can put back into other things in the community. So, you know, it's been far reaching. It's been the greatest scale of, of program that we've seen in this country. And we really can't lose the momentum and the lessons that we've learned by cutting the program now. How many young people are getting opportunities through this? I mean, is there a total number? Yeah, so this year alone, we have 242,000 young people. Um, and we think about previous, you know, interventions where we create opportunities for young people. We were talking about numbers like 40,000. So 242,000 in one year alone is massive. Um, over the four years, just through the Education Assistant and General Assistant program, we have over 790,000 young people getting a first work experience. And research tells us that having that first work experience really makes a difference to young people being able to step into a next earning opportunity and to be able to hold on to that opportunity. We talk about stickiness. Um, and so that the next opportunity sticks more if you've had that first work experience. These young people are leaving the program with um, some, some skills on how to write a CV as well as a reference letter, which again, we know are really valuable signs to employers that you know these young people have skills to offer and are, are, are worth hiring. Um, and so these are just some of the outcomes that, that we've seen. And again, at, at the scale that's never been, that's unprecedented in South Africa. Is there any verifiable sort of data on what percentage of people in this position are getting jobs as a result of this opportunity? We all know the problem that young people have. You can't get a job without experience, you can't get experience without a job. Many of us have been through that. Um, is there any, evidence, any sort of data that tells us what percentage of young people who get this opportunity, if we call it that, are then able to get a job as a result? Bump into someone at the school who lets them stay? Yeah, so we hear lots of things anecdotally. So one of the downfalls of, of, the, of the stimulus is that all of the funding was directly for stipends. Okay, great, it goes into people's pockets, but there hasn't been a lot of funding set aside for M&E. Having said that, other partners have come on board to do some monitoring and evaluation. So the data is a bit... Um, patchy on, on what happens next. Um, we know through the DBE, some uh, data that we just uh, found out about, that 8,000 of those young people who had some kind of education qualification who came through this assistant program is now, you know, registered on the government the SAL system. So we know that, which is a small number. Um, we also know anecdotally that a lot of young people have said they've used the money to kind of bolster their side hustle so that that became sort of full-time self um, employment after the program ended. And then we hear from young people all the time that they want to go and study um, to be teachers as a result. So we know that there's a serious channeling of young people into the teaching profession, particularly through the Funzula Shaka bursary scheme. Um, so these are all piecemeal um, and I admit not um, wholly representative numbers, but I think there is some, you know, insight there to say that this program is gaining momentum, it's gaining traction. They're starting to have partnerships with the private sector and pipelining young people into various opportunities post-program. Um, but we really can't keep that momentum going if the door of, of the funding shuts on the program. You know, it's also difficult to plan because 
every cycle at the end of the phase, you're not sure you're going to get money or you're not going to get money. And that makes it really difficult to partner with the private sector when, you know, there's all this uncertainty. So we need the funding to continue and we actually need it to be ring fenced within the specific department that's responsible for the program so that there can be accountability, but also a sustainability for the program long term. Obviously, every department wants to avoid cutbacks, right? I mean, you will know, Crystal, everybody's worried about being the one to lose money. There are all sorts of reasons as to why that is. Why should this continue to receive the same amount of money that it gets now as opposed to other departments? Well, this program is, you know, double bang for your buck. Um, so one, you're giving young people work experience, you're putting some money into local economies, which will help grow the economy. So that's a big return on investment. But two, we know from the latest poll study that, you know, eight in 10 um, grade fours can't read for meaning in this country. And, and we know from other teaching assistant programs like Fundawanda and Mpopo, you know, an under-resourced province, a generally rural province, um, that where teaching assistants are in schools and are well-trained, um, these learners are almost a year ahead in terms of, of learning compared to the peer, their peers at other schools without teaching assistants. So teaching assistants in schools gives outcomes for the young people who are assistants, but it also gives improved learning outcomes for learners in school. So this is really, you know, double return on your investment. It seems it's like a no-brainer to me that we should be backing something like this um, that's showed already, even if it's in, you know, even in its infancy as a program, that it can really make a difference um, in communities and to young people. And so we really need people to sign the petition and get behind um, the Find Our Futures campaign. Crystal Duncan-Williams, thank you. Project Lead for Youth Capital, do appreciate it.